every election time, we, we start talking about immigration, border security and those things. They are important issues, but sadly, they've now been couched almost for a generation around um, others. So it concerns me as an individual that um, our kind of political class has, has used that centrally in our discussion. And really, this highlighted last weekend, and uh, terrorism uh, is not restricted by border, race or religion. I also served in the UK uh, when terrorist uh, incidents were occurring. So all, all I'm doing is pleading, really, for a more reasonable debate, and that we really leave uh, that kind of rhetoric out of the debate. I think the New Zealand Prime Minister at the moment is giving an incredible example of how to speak moderately, um, in moderation, um, and, and really with compassion. And also her security services, the, their own police commissioner, and indeed our own security services here talk in measured tones. We need that, I think, from our parliament across all sides. Now, Linda Reynolds, um, I know you don't want to talk about politics, but we mentioned uh, Waleed Ali's uh, speech. Um, and what he was essentially accusing the Prime Minister of was plotting in the shadow cabinet some time ago to use the fear of Islam and Muslims for political purposes. Do you want to respond to that? I do, but I don't want to do it, as we've said, in a, in a political way tonight. I would caution all commentators and all politicians, as I said earlier, is to be very careful with your words. And Ray, thank you very much for your comments, because I think you are spot on and I support what Cathy has said. So do you uh, Ray, agree issue... with Ray Martin that fear of others has been used for political purposes? Well, Tony, this is a very personal issue for me and the uh, circumstances that you were talking about, Ray, are things that I've, I've lived through. And last month I gave probably the hardest and the most personal speech I've ever given in the Senate. And it was uh, in response to uh, the Labor's amendments to the Medivac bill. And I was literally almost physically ill when I saw some of my Senate and House of Reps colleagues in the chamber cheering and high-fiving the passage of these amendments because I was one of the few in that chamber who has lived through um, terrorism and the impact of, ter uh, you know, up in the Bali bombings. I was up there, I saw, I smelt, and I got to understand the commodification of human beings. There are people, there are people in our own nation and there are people overseas who want to do us harm. They don't respect our compassion and they certainly do not respect our way of life. And can all I, the can things I just Kathy interrupt you there? Are you about... drawing some kind of link between the Bali bombings and refugees mm. coming to Australia for medical services? Yeah. What I'm saying is that having my colleagues cheer for this policy, that will inevitably lead to the boat trade coming again. I mean, there are thousands of people up in town near north who people smugglers don't see them as human beings, they see them as commodities to profit from. And I saw that firsthand in 2001 and 2002. And I saw the consequences on those who were desperate enough to pay to come here. And they drowned the most horrendous deaths. And it happened again when Labor opened the borders and we, there's at least 1,200 people that we know drowned. And for me, that is not compassion, encouraging people to be commoditized, not by, by will, but to come here and to drown again. Because as a member of, of the armed forces here in Australia, who is it who has to recover those bodies out of the water, both of the times in the past? It's not, it's not me, and it's not in politicians. It's the men and women in uniform. It's our customs and border force people who are still waking up with night terrors. So in the parliament, we have a responsibility to think about the consequences of the policies we implement. So my point is this, Tony, is that there are people out there who commoditise other human beings and whether they exploit them for some perversion of religion or left or right ideology or whether they just simply commoditise them and send them off to drown, they are people who do not deserve our respect or our compassion. They are people we have to stand up to and stop. But we absolutely have to reserve our compassion for those who are genuine refugees. And like we have always in this country, okay. we have brought people in who genuinely need our Can I just come note one thing? You didn't really answer the question about uh, whether or not you'd be disturbed if you discovered that the current Prime Minister had, while in shadow cabinet, tried to use... The Prime Minister has come out very... Uh, as I said, I didn't want to politicise this, but the Prime Minister has been very clear tonight. It did not happen. It simply did not happen. 
And my bigger point is for anybody to try and politicise this issue now, while events are still unfolding in New Zealand, is inappropriate and tacky.